For the first time ever, liquid water has been discovered on Mars, and the significance of this discovery cannot be overstated, as it virtually guarantees that life does indeed exist on Mars today, at least in some form, based on everything that we currently know about the building blocks for life, because after all, where there is water, there is life. And in this video, I'm going to discuss key details about this discovery and then connect the dots and other really interesting pieces of information about Mars that most people are just not aware of. This discovery comes at the same time as a global sandstorm that has engulfed the entire planet, which I'll be discussing later in this video. But first, let me start by discussing the details of the liquid water discovery, which is in the form of a massive underground subglacial lake located at the South Pole of Mars. And if your first thought is, wait, this is an underground lake located beneath a glacier, why should we even assume that the possibility of life would exist there? Well, we must first remind ourselves of the 2014 discovery at Lake Vostok in Antarctica, where scientists were shocked to find microbial life thriving a half mile below the Antarctic ice sheet. So compare that to the recent discovery on Mars, which is estimated to be one and a half kilometers or just under one mile, beneath Mars's polar ice cap. And this data was collected through a scientific study by Italian researchers that was conducted between 2012 and 2015, where they utilized satellite data from 29 radar pulses, which indicated a body of water, possibly an aquifer or a reservoir, underneath the ice. And this body of water, which is thought to be salt water based on the fact that it is not frozen, is 20 kilometers wide, or roughly 12 and a half miles wide. And right now, you're probably wondering how they can identify a body of water that is one mile beneath ice, all from a satellite that is orbiting a planet. Well, apparently there is something called the Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface and Ionosphere Sounding Instrument, which is fixed on the European Space Agency's Mars Express spacecraft, which essentially bounces low-frequency radar waves back and forth and identifies changes in signal. You know, I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand how this technology works, but it's almost as if we've already created Star Trek-type technology, where we use some type of gadget to search for life forms or whatever from a distance. And of course, I'm being humorous here, but I could see how many people would doubt our technological capabilities to know all of this information about Mars having never stepped foot on there to verify it. Getting back to the significance of this discovery, there's water on Mars, so how can there not be life there? Some people will mention the higher levels of radiation on Mars, which of course is an obstacle for humans in our attempts to travel to Mars safely, but let's not forget that we've discovered certain bacteria that literally develop and thrive inside of nuclear reactors, which of course was another stunning discovery by scientists some years ago. But another indicator that life already exists on Mars involves the changing levels of methane emitting into space from the red planet, which even varies between seasons. Now, methane is not necessarily evidence of the existence of life on Mars, but it is an indicator that some sort of organic matter may indeed exist currently on the planet. Now, let's be real. Many people, myself included, already believe that life once thrived on Mars at some point in the distant past. And there really is little reason to doubt this, considering that there is empirical evidence of ancient lakes, oceans, rivers, and water channels existing throughout the surface of Mars. In fact, scientists state that it was likely three to four billion years ago when life was habitable on Mars, which is an interesting claim considering that we haven't even stepped foot on the planet. And we really don't even know what the surface of Earth was like even just one billion years ago. I mean, some 300 million years ago, there was the supercontinent of Pangaea, which they say broke apart about 175 million years ago, but there was also a supercontinent before Pangaea called Rodinia that they say broke apart approximately 700 million years ago. And I'm sure that scientists are both right and wrong about different aspects of the previous supercontinents, particularly when they existed, but the point is that according to them, all of this is less than 1 billion years ago. Think about that. Seriously, we have no clue what was happening here on Earth a billion years ago, and we can't say with any type of certainty what Mars was like one billion years ago, much less three to four billion years ago. Now, hold that thought and think about this. 
You may be aware that there is currently an ongoing global sandstorm surrounding the entire planet of Mars, which started on May 30th and is expected to last for months based on past observations. And here you can see a comparison of right before the storm and how over the course of three weeks it completely engulfed the planet. These storms seem to happen once every five and a half years or so. And here's actually another example of a storm that lasted for four months back in 2001. But there are, of course, other examples of massive dust storms on Mars that may not engulf the entire planet, but rather a large portion of it. And here you can see an example from 2005. So I'm about to reiterate a point that I've made in multiple other videos involving the evidence of ancient lakes, rivers, and water channels on the surface of Mars. So if you've seen all my other videos, bear with me for a moment while I repeat myself, as I just can't discuss Mars without making more people aware of this important detail which is that how can scientists state what the surface of Mars was like three to four billion years ago when there are routine sandstorms constantly changing the surface of Mars? I mean, they give examples of a supposed massive flood that happened on Mars three billion years ago, yet virtually the entire surface of Mars is covered with, with the remnants of ancient lakes, riverbeds, and water channels. So the question is, why haven't three billion years of global sandstorms not eroded these away? Is it possible that the surface of Mars had water perhaps just thousands of years ago? Like I said, I've made this point in other videos, and the most common response that I get is related to the atmosphere on Mars being only 1% the density compared to Earth's atmosphere. And they go on to mention how the strength of the sandstorms on Mars are not nearly as strong as depicted in movies. Take the example of the movie The Martian with Matt Damon, which shows a storm blowing with hurricane force strength. When in reality, the strongest winds on Mars are limited to about 70 miles an hour due to the lower atmospheric density. But scientists themselves state that the sand particles would still be moving at 70 miles an hour even if the wind itself didn't actually feel as strong as it would here on Earth. So although, yes, erosion on Mars occurs much slower than here on Earth, it doesn't change the fact that Mars still has an atmosphere, it's thick enough to be observable from space, and it is still dense enough for these dust storms to have sustained winds of 70 miles an hour that engulf the entire planet for months on end. So of course that would cause erosion. All that sand moving in and out of the ancient riverbeds should have eroded the sides away into oblivion billions of years ago. So that is why this particular detail of the existing riverbeds and water channels is so important when considering the possibility that Mars may have been habitable far more recently than scientists suggest. And by the way, it's not just sandstorms on Mars, but Mars also has literally millions of dust devils every single day, and some of them are massive. They've even observed one that was 12 miles high, or 20 kilometers, which is 10 times larger than the largest tornadoes ever observed here on Earth, just not as strong. But if you're still not convinced, you should then consider the Phoenix rover and the fact that it took less than a decade to be almost completely buried by the sands of Mars. And this was reported just a few months ago. And you can see photos here of the before and after. And I'm willing to bet that after this current global sandstorm dissipates, this site will be completely buried and non-existent. I'd also like to see before and after photos of the various riverbeds located throughout Mars to document just how much they changed by this one storm alone. Everybody should demand to see what the data shows on that. So yeah, I'm not afraid to say it. I strongly believe that the surface of Mars was significantly different far more recently than three to four billion years ago. In fact, probably far more recently than even three to four million years ago. That aside, we have to wonder what type of life could exist on Mars today. I bet all my money that at a minimum, microbial life exists in the body of water that was just discovered. But could there be small fish or crustaceans there as well? Could there be insects around the area? This actually reminds me of articles that were just published today and going around the internet regarding the discovery of worms in Siberia that were brought back to life after being frozen for 42,000 years. I mean, that's beyond amazing, and this is actually a real eye-opener for what we thought was possible. And this gets me thinking and makes me wonder what would happen if the surface of Mars was to be fertilized with just water alone. It's been claimed that no organic compounds have been found in Martian soil, but that of course does not mean that they do not exist, and even with our rovers, we've only explored a micro fraction of the Mars surface. 
It's also worth mentioning though that liquid water has already been discovered on Mars as a result of melting ice caps, but the recent discovery of this massive subglacial lake at the South Pole equates to a persistent body of water that provides the conditions for life for an extended period of time, not just melting runoff, thus increasing the probability that life has actually developed there. Ultimately, it will not be until we finally step foot on Mars before we get any real answers as to whether life actually exists there or not. But before I close this up, it is interesting to point out that today, July 27th, 2018, just so happens to be the closest approach that Mars and Earth have had with each other in 15 years, since 2003. This also actually coincides with today being a full moon, but not just any full moon, there's going to be a lunar eclipse. And the so-called blood moon will also be visible this weekend, so this is definitely a big weekend for astronomers and people that have an interest in the cosmos. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are on about this recent Mars discovery, as well as the possibility for life existing there now or in the past. But I'm Jimmy, this is Bright Insight. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I have many more videos to come on a whole wide variety of topics. Take care, everybody.